Hi, I'm Sarah Helmbrecht, the 2015-16 7th and 8th grade Texas State Letters About Literature winner. And I actually entered this competition because my English teacher had my whole grade enter. And I never really would have thought to enter a writing contest because while I really loved writing um, and always have, I didn't really think I was very good at it and I didn't do a lot of it. And so um, she had us enter this competition and it really opened up a great opportunity for me. Um, and my friend Lauren Hakma also won second place, so it was really cool for our whole school and it was just a really fun experience. Um, so I actually wrote it about The Beginning of Everything by Robin Schneider, which is a book that I read on an airplane on the way home from Thanksgiving break right before I found out we were going to write these letters. And um, I, it just had like more impact on me than most books ever than any book ever has I just started bawling on this plane and I'm like I need to pull it together so I got the notes app on my phone and decided I was just going to sort of train of thought try and put everything in words because you know if I if I like had it down on paper I could stop thinking about it and hopefully stop crying um so I just wrote this really long train of thought like single paragraph thing in the notes app and when I found out about this assignment I ended up getting that out and realized um just even though it wasn't very well written or anything I had some things in there that really were just life-changing and um the, the book really helped me to gain a lot of confidence and sort of realize both the ways that I've changed in the past couple years and the ways that I still needed to and the ways that I still need to now um, and it helped me sort of come face to face with the way that I deal with my own insecurities and the way that I idolize other people sometimes um, especially through social media and um, just certain girls at school um, and just the way that I interact with other people and it's been a really great wake-up call for me uh, and so I ended up writing my letter about that book and um, it's been so much fun I actually it's one of the most personal probably the most personal things I've ever written um, and I sort of only expected it to be read by my English teacher the few close friends who I allowed to read it um, and the judges um, and so I never really expected for it to be up on the internet and everything. Um, I didn't even show it to my parents, but then um, after I won, I realized sort of now that it's up on the internet, all these people who I haven't seen in years have been emailing me and texting me saying like, hey, I saw your letter, like, I remember when you seemed less confident and like, I'm proud of you and I've, I've watched you change. And other people saying like, I've gone through the same thing. And that was just so neat because it's something we never talk about no one ever talks about their insecurities because it's not cool to be insecure it's cool to be confident and so i think i think it was just a really great opportunity for me um and sort of opened my eyes to the fact that i'm not alone in being insecure and um it i mean this book really helped me so <laughs> enough rambling um here's my letter to robin schneider the author of the beginning of everything um dear robin schneider I read the beginning of everything on an airplane. I was surrounded by my sleeping family, strangers' faces lit by MacBooks, and little wailing kids shushed by their parents. I figured I'd pass the time reading one of the many silly coming-of-age novels I had stuffed in my carry-on. I expected meaningless. I certainly didn't think I would end up crying into my sleeve, my mind racing with an incredible new reality. I walked onto that plane like many, struggling under the weight of insecurity. I left with a lightened heart and a new sense of confidence. When I was younger, I spent every free moment reading. I immersed myself in Harry Potter and Pendragon so that I wouldn't have to deal with my own life. It wasn't until around fifth grade that I came out of my shell and found a balance between imagination and actually living my life. But as soon as I started spending less time in my own head, I began the unfortunately unavoidable middle school routine of comparing myself to others. It wasn't necessarily that I disliked who I was. I had my own sense of confidence. I did, however, put people up on pedestals, and in doing so, put myself below them. Everyone in middle school is at least a little bit insecure. I was never too deeply self-conscious about my weight or acne or braces. For me, it was the girls at school and on Instagram who just seemed impossibly perfect. I related to Ezra through our shared habit. He is instantly likable, friendly and smart, yet tra struck by tragedy. He, reels like a re he reads like a real, flawed person, not a seemingly perfect fictional character. His main emotional pitfall is his tendency to idolize people and mistake this for love. 
Charlotte is radiant, the stereotypical popular high school cheerleader. When they dated, he didn't see that she was selfish, abusive, and taking advantage of him. Cassidy is the mysterious new girl. She is an enigma, and Ezra is too shallow to see that he can't really love her without first understanding her. Your writing dragged me right into the story. I was immersed in Ezra's head, just as elated and angry and completely in love as he was at any given moment. When his life revolved around Cassidy, I grew to idolize her along with Ezra. I, too, associated his changing character with Cassidy's influence. That night at Castle Park, when she said the words that ruined his life, I felt pure betrayal. I suddenly realized that Ezra had only loved Cassidy for her shell. He never dug deep enough to see her flaws, her hurt, her shame. He was too naive to see the pain she was hiding. Had he asked more questions and had she told the truth, he could have known and loved her for who she was. Instead, he distanced himself from her through idolization. As I read, I realized how often I did this in my own life. I would decide that someone I knew was perfect and that I was below them. This gave them influence over me. Like Ezra, I only saw the outside, the show they put on. Now I see that many of the girls I idolized had just as many weaknesses as I did, and a few even idolized me. We're all just people, flawed and burdened yet profoundly blessed, trying to make sense of our lives. The only way to find true confidence is to accept and love everyone as an equal. Thank you, Ms. Schneider, for creating an integral part of my journey towards this confidence. Sincerely, Sarah Holmbrecht.